When you remove the sole V-locks from the box, you'll need to turn it upside down, T take the pump assembly out of the box, turn it upside down, remove the uh, elastomeric with uh, pressure sensitive adhesive on the back side, remove the adhesive from the back side, and then apply it to the back side of the heat exchanger. In the process, you want to make sure that the heat, that the insulation is applied uh, as centered as possible on the back side of the heat exchanger so there's an even gap all the way around the heat exchanger. Once you've applied it, once you've made sure that you've got it uh, centered, then you press it down with your hand to make sure it has a good attachment to the heat exchanger. Once you have done that, you want to take the heat ex heat exchanger, the pump heat exchanger assembly, turn it uh, insulation side down on the side of the tank where you'd like to locate it, take the specially fabricated uh, bracket um, that goes over the heat exchanger as so, Locate it on the locate the sole VLOX assembly on the side of the tank so that it, the the drain on the left hand side and the port on the right hand side point straight down the side of the tank. Once you've lined that up, it's time to find an assistant. Ta have it, have the assistant actually take and use a a tool. In this particular case, we're using a, a handle of an adjustable wrench in order to hold the bracket down while you're applying the sheet metal screws to. Uh, to the Solvilox, uh, to the Solvilox bracket in order to retain it against the side of the tank. Once you've applied the two screws on the bottom, there's three additional screws that need to be applied up top. This bracket and all these screws are supplied with the Solvilox. Once you have applied this, once you have mounted the Solvilox on the side of the tank and stood the tank back up, what you need to do is you need to locate the differential control and in this particular case we're locating it directly over the top of the uh, upper element you do a pilot hole and then you put in the first sheet metal screw that first sheet metal screw is used to hold the Steca control while you apply the other two sheet metal screws all these screws are supplied with the sole V-locks uh, if you look on the inside cover of the, of the Steca control it shows you which which of these terminal locations control uh, or, or go to which sensor. In this particular case we're mounting the sensor for the bottom of the tank. Uh, it's just a matter of depressing the alligator style jaws and pressing in the wire. Once you've done that for both wires for the bottom of the tank you're ready to uh, move to the bottom of the tank. On the bottom of the tank if you remove the cover to the bottom electrode take a, take a flat screwdriver and turn the bottom electrode um, all the way counterclockwise uh, so you have the minimum temperature output on the bottom electrode then you want to take the probe sensor, or not the probe sensor but the the lug sensor take the lug sensor and you want to actually uh, with your left hand he's actually pulling out the insulation underneath the electrode so you're actually mounting the lug sensor flush up against the bottom of the tank pinched between the insulation and the tank in order to get a good temperature reading. With your finger or a pair of pliers you want to remove the heat trap from the from the hot outside of the tank and feed in the special solar dip tube, closed end solar dip tube that's supplied with the Solvilox. Once you have done that you want to take the dielectric nipples that uh, typically come with the hot water tank. Uh, you apply tape and or pipe dope or both to the both side both threads of the dielectric nipple and you want to install a dielectric nipple in each of the ports to the hot water tank both the port both the port that's marked cold water in as well as a port that's marked hot water out uh, once you've installed it finger tight you want to use a tool in order to tighten it as tight as you can reasonably get it Once you've installed the dielectric nipples on the, the cold water inlet side, you want to install a threaded brass or bronze T. Uh, that brass or bronze T will enable you to uh, have both cold water inlet as well as supply cold water to the Solvulox assembly.
since we're going to be using stainless steel flexible line in order to make the connection between the solvia locks and the tank you need to have a male nipple uh, on the on the outgoing side of the T in order to make the connection to the stainless steel line in all of these connections and all of these threaded connections you're going to want to be sure to use a good a high quality uh, Teflon tape as well as high quality pipe dope one or the other or both um, to ensure that once the assembly is put together you don't have any leaks that you have to remove it and uh, reapply uh, thread sealing once you have the T on the top on the cold water inlet to the tank um, you are then ready to take the flexible stainless steel line um, that is required in order to make the connection and start connecting the Solvilox. Actually in this this case this is the hot water out from the Solvilox is going to be connected to um, to the special solar dip tube on the storage tank. This connection is the connection for the cold water inlet to the Solvilox as you'll notice in just a minute that this cold water inlet will be connected to the T on the cold water inlet side of the tank. It is important to realize that the, the flexible stainless steel lines that are used uh, are not lined with plastic because the temperature requirements for a solar storage tank uh, these need to be flexible stainless steel lines. Uh, they have um, on the female nut side they've got an EPDM gasket that is temperature rated to 230 degrees um, and then the flexible stainless steel line doesn't have a plastic liner so the flexible stainless steel is rated to 500 degrees. Once you've had once you've bent the stainless steel line roughly in place you're applying half inch elastomeric um, these stainless steel lines are three quarter inch stainless steel lines three quarter inch nominal stainless steel lines with a half inch elastomeric jacket Rubitex jacket on the outside uh, this is not polyethylene, polyethylene will not bend like this but this is a higher temperature, higher quality insulation than polyethylene it is sold in Lowe's but is primarily sold for HVAC, uh, heating, ventilating, and air conditioning trades and they would be the people that would use this type of insulation the most often. Um, by using non-slit uh, Rubitex, you're able to accomplish uh, accomplish the insulation with a, with a reduction in time, as well as with a, a higher quality fit without having the seams that you have to either tape or glue later on. One point you want to be aware of is when you're when you're bending the stainless steel line for the connection to the cold water in to the cold water inlet you want to be sure that you bend it in such a manner that you're not blocking the control box on the top of the tank uh, a number of local building inspectors will object if you're actually blocking the control box to the top of the tank it makes it more difficult for the electrician to do an installation in this particular case he is going to the left of the control box um, so that is not an issue you want to be sure that you don't cross thread the connection but once you make the connection it's just a matter of tightening it with a wrench in this particular case the T on the left hand side is not required um, he's using a T on the left hand side because he's got uh, uh, a couple other things that he's actually connecting to this tank uh, for a standard installation you'd have a T on the cold water inlet and you wouldn't have a T on the on the hot water side He's taking the CNC cut insulation, removing the adhesive backing, and applying it to the front side of the heat exchanger. You want to be sure to be careful and not remove all the adhesive, all the paper backing before you try and apply the heat the uh, insulation to the heat exchanger because stuff will want to stick. So you want to feed it on first, and then peel off the adhesive backing little by little. To make sure that you've got it uh, firmly secured on the heat exchanger. He's removing the adhesive backing from the insulation for the side of the heat exchanger. Again, all this insulation is half inch Rubitex. Uh, again, high quality, high temperature uh, insulation material. The insulation he's installing right now has been cut with a computer controlled machine in order to make sure that it fits properly on both the back, top, and sides of the heat exchanger.